Hello and welcome to CG Visuals, my name's Zach, and today we'll be taking a look at how to create this 3D levitating earth boulder effect using trap code particular V6 and After Effects CC 2022. So we'll start with a standard 1080p comp with a new instance of trap code particular and open the designer. From here we can start to build our simulation, so we'll start in the emitter and choose a 3D model. And since this is going to be a procedural setup, we can just choose a simple smooth sphere, reduce the emitter size to 400, and set the emit from to faces. And then we're going to change the emit behavior to use dynamic form. And if we select on a grid, that'll completely fill our sphere with particles. So we'll enable the shadowlets so we can get some shading going. Reduce the color strength of 75, the adjust size to 75, distance 300, and we use project for the lighting direction. We'll set the particle type to a cloudlet, reduce the particle size to 1, the randomness to 25. And then we're going to do something interesting for the color over life. We're going to use color over Y axis. So it will get brighter at the top and darker at the bottom. So we use these custom color values that we're putting in here so you can Pause the video if you want to get the exact values, but we're basically going for a, a light sandy color that will gradually transition downwards into more of a dark um, orangey color, very pale orangey dirt color. And that's going to give us some essentially uh, texture variety, some fake shading which you can see on this shaded sphere. So then we'll add some displacement and we'll temporarily lose that shading but that will come back later once we add our light source. So we'll set the effect size to 1, displacement to minus 125, the displacement mode to radial and then we'll choose fractal strength over the Y axis as well. And so this way we can have the displacement stronger towards the middle of the sphere but we can also create these deviations which will simulate the erosion of the rock surface and this just helps us to define how it will look we'll set the scale to 15 the complexity to 2 the multiplier to 0.2 the octave scale to 5 and the evolution speed to 0 and we can even go one step further and twist the geometry by 75 and put the axis roll to 90 so it's essentially vertical and we'll rename this system to Rock Surface. And we can see the details there. A little bit difficult to see without proper shading. So we'll go ahead and click Apply, just so that we can add some scene lights. Because if you remember, in our lighting settings in the shadowlets, we used the placement method Project. So that actually needs a spotlight, and that needs to be named Shadowlet. Um, and then whatever you want to name it afterwards, but Shadlet with a capital S. That will create our spotlight, which will interact with trap code particular. I'm going for a, a standard kind of back lighting using the top down view there just to make sure it's pointing towards the model. And that way we get nice highlights and shadows. And it just makes 3D objects look more realistic and attractive. So then we'll open the designer back up. We want to add some more variety, so we're going to create a new system, call it Mud Surface. And we can actually delete the particle type, delete the size and opacity, because it's just going to use the settings from the master system. We are going to change the colour of life slightly, and we'll save ourselves some time by copying the custom colour ramp from the primary system and paste it into this new Mud Surface system. And all I'm doing here is just bringing down the brightness on those color values because I want the mud to be a slightly darker color. We are going to need to manually choose an OBJ model again with the same settings, the smooth sphere with the emitter size to 400, dynamic form again for the emitter behavior but this time we're going to define the number of particles as 50,000 and also slightly offset it in the y-axis. We're going to increase the effect size to 10, much higher than the last time, but we'll choose the same radial and radial displacement of 100, uh, minus 125. And again, we're going to copy the custom displacement graph, paste it into the second system, and all we're doing here is just trying to exaggerate what we did, just so that that mud protrudes a little bit further. 
We'll set the same uh, displacement settings as last time. So that matches the displacement from the primary system. And then we'll wait for that to load in. And it's just adding a little bit of darker color variation, a little bit of mud that's protruding from the surface. Now if we bring in a custom background, we can see how easy it is now just to apply a curves adjustment, increase the red channel slightly. And we're already starting to match the scene pretty well because the key thing is that we've already uh, set up the correct lighting position. And we have plenty of detail on the surface from our cloud cloudlet particle types. So then we'll go back into the designer and we're just going to duplicate the mud surface system so we have most of our settings in place, rename it to rock highlights. And this time we're going to do the opposite instead of going darker with these values we're actually going to go quite a bit brighter because we want to create some, some essentially what looks like sand on the surface. So I'm going for an even ramp. You can pause the video and put in the exact color values. I did find that the uh, the color values you choose are quite sensitive. So if you want to copy the exact color values in there to make sure it looks exactly how it does in the tutorial, as it did take me a bit of experimentation. And if we go into the displacement settings, what we're going to do is copy the primary displacement and paste that into the rock highlights. So it's using the identical displacement technique as the primary system but this time we don't want the uh, we don't want the evolution to be offset at all we'll also reset the relative position to zero and this time set the particles to back to faces and so um, we can see our highlights appearing on the rock surface it's not quite what I was going for we want it to essentially look more like lighter shades of sand so instead we're going to go back in to the designer and define the particle type to be a glow sphere and we'll just set the glow feather amount to 25 we could also reduce the opacity if we wanted to but straight away that gives us a nice sort of almost looks like sand has sort of accumulated on the surface and it's giving us our, our contrast of shading that we want now if we just disable all of the settings except for the highlights it will perform a lot faster and we can just use the global controls to essentially add some rotation and also change the position as well so that's all i've done there is added some rotation keyframes and that's actually revealed a little issue which is that uh we can actually see through our model in some parts so i'm going to go back into the designer one more time duplicate the mud surface system call this rock volume and we're not gonna have to change too many settings we're just gonna go into the emitter type and change that to a volume and so that's gonna essentially give us an interior and we actually are gonna want to increase the particle size as well so we'll increase that to four and so now we shouldn't have the same issue we had last time we will also bring down the displacement a little bit as well and then when we bring it all together, we should now have our surface and also a little bit of uh, interior detail as well. And so then it's just a case of rendering out the asset. Once you've decided what you want the animation movement to be, we're going to render this as an alpha mov with the animation codec. Pre-render this as an asset that we can then render at full res, six seconds only took 18 minutes, so it's pretty quick. And we'll then just import that asset that we created. To clean up our workspace a bit, I'm actually gonna hide these layers and enable the shy switch there. So now we're just looking at our two layers. And we're gonna click on the earth asset, go to effects and apply the red giant shadow effect. And basically what I wanna do is try and sort of align this up And it takes a little bit of fiddling around, but we're just trying to match the lighting. And that will give us some very quick shadows. I'm going to add a an alpha mat to the edge of that cliff there. But we also can adjust the size of the shadow. And just do some tweaks, make sure it looks right. And then this is our final result. Could have probably done something a little bit more interesting with the uh, rotation, but I've just done a basic hovering motion. 
and so we can see this is quite an easy way to get a 3D boulder without going into a 3D software. And this effect was inspired by some of the earth bending effects we have in our elemental bending pack trap code elements. Kind of inspired by this. This is a more detailed project. It has like grass. You can change the shading and everything. And we also have other variations of it as well. We have like this granite rock. And so there's a link in the description if you want to find out more about trap code elements. And we are going to be doing some more tutorials in the future. So we'll wrap things up for now. Make sure to like and subscribe to stay tuned for future videos. Good luck with your projects and thanks for watching.